Hello and welcome to another video tutorial of Archimatics. In this tutorial, we're going to construct a grand piano using free curve. So let's get started. If we look at our grid here, a piano might usually be about two meters wide. So we'll select the free curve node uh, on the sidebar menu and rename it. We'll call it piano curve. When we created this node, the scene view automatically went into add point mode to let us just click on any uh, grid point that we see. So we're snapping to grid by default. And by clicking uh, around, we are just adding points. By clicking on that first point again at the end of the curve, we essentially closed the curve. And uh, we can open and close it as much as we want using the icon on the node palette menu. We can also add more points in between existing points by clicking on any of the blue handles in the midpoint of the segment and we can select those points and hit the delete key and get rid of them. We can also select and deselect points just by clicking on them and then shift clicking to multi-select points. If we option click, then we've created a bezier point and we can drag out the handles. So as we keep on selecting more points and changing them to bezier handles with the option key uh, or alt key on the PC, then we get something that looks a little bit more like a piano curve. Now, right now, it's automatically set to grid snapping. We can turn grid snapping off and back on. Uh, if there's just one point that we quickly want to take off the grid, we can hold down uh, the Command or Windows key, and it will uh, temporarily free us up from, from the grid snapping. While points are selected, we can deselect them just by clicking anywhere off the curve. And if we click again, then we've deselected the entire node. We can continue to edit the curve by clicking on points and dragging them. But let's do something more with this piano curve. Let's extrude it. We'll connect it to one of these nodes in the sidebar menu. When we click on the output of our curve node, the list is filtered, so it's easier to find the extrude node uh, that we can connect to. Since our extrude node inherits curve data from the curve node, we can still edit the curve node and influence the extrude node. The extrude node has its own handles, and we see them here as green handles. Two small point handles that are uh, one on top of the other control the top and bottom bevel. By dragging them down, we can increase and decrease the bevel, which by default is a single uh, segmented chamfer. The top green handle also lets us control the taper of the extrude by sliding it horizontally back and forth. Since we don't really need a taper for our piano, when we bring it near vertical, it'll snap back into place. Here in the inspector, we can also increase the segments of the bevel, and that makes the bevel a little more rounded. In this case, we've got five segments. With just two nodes, a free curve and the extrude, we've already got something that looks like, well, a baby grand piano. By multi-selecting, shift-clicking, and dragging, we can make this piano even grander. If we wanted to try a new material for this piano, we could override the black lacquer by clicking on the Material node in the Extrude palette and choosing a different material uh, for this new node, material node that we've created. We can scale the material using the various sliders in the Material node. We could link this node up to another object in the model. Uh, or uh, we could simply delete it and revert back to the black lacquer. This black lacquer material will be used by any new node that we create. Let's create new sides for the piano. We'll turn this extrude into a baseboard. By clicking on the extrude handle, we can bring the height of the extrude down a bit. Then we're going to take the same piano curve, but we're going to modify it a little bit to make the sides of the piano. To do this, we're going to cut part of it away. So instead of extruding uh, immediately, let's go ahead and put it into a shape merger, where the first input defaults to the additive shape. On the left sidebar, we can click on the rectangle node to make a new rectangle, and that automatically gets fed into the shape merger and becomes a cutting shape. So the rectangle is now cutting away part of that piano curve and making it shorter. There are several outputs to the shape merger, but we'll take the difference output, the Boolean difference, and feed it into a new extrude. Since this model is non-destructive, the new extrude will adapt to whatever the um, shape merged shape is, and that we can keep adjusting. Uh, 
uh, and we adjust the height of the extrude a bit more. But now what we'd like to do is not taper, but offset this shape. You'll recall that the top uh, extrude handle um, on the side alters the taper. The bottom actually does something uh, different. It offsets negative and positive from the original shape. Let's go ahead and make use this curve one more time. Uh, we'll use the difference again to make a top for the piano. And that's another extrude, and we are just lifting that extrude up with its transform handle, uh, making it smaller. And this will become the top that can swing open. In fact, let's go ahead and open it by rotating it a little bit up. And again, now we can see we've got three distinct extrude pieces, but they're all responding to whatever we do to the original piano shape uh, and the merged piano shape. Any selected object in the scene shows all of the shapes that go into making it. So we still have the rectangle and the original piano shape visible whenever we select any of these objects. As we add more nodes to the graph, it's a good idea to keep a good naming convention so that the graph makes sense as we come and look at it later. Also, the thumbnails are adjustable. By clicking on the little red sphere that appears when you mouse over a thumbnail, you can orbit the thumbnail camera. The main body of the piano still looks a little bit solid, so let's try to make it hollow. To do this, we're going to alter the curve as it comes in to the plan input of the extrude for the sides, and there's a thickness slider that we can adjust. This takes the solid and makes it a thick wall instead. You can continue to adjust it, but at some point, perhaps it's better just to type in a value. These adjustments that we make under the plan input do not affect any of the original source shapes that come in. Now, as we clean up the graph a little bit and tidy things up, rename things, it's becoming clear that the body of the piano needs to be lifted up above the ground altogether. When you think you've got a group of nodes that form a kind of body, and you'd like to transform them all together rather than singly, it's a good idea to group them. You can multi-select them and hit the grouper icon. The grouper is a node that encapsulates all of the nodes that you selected before you hit the grouper. Now that the nodes have been grouped into a grouper, we can operate on it as if it were a single object. So we can raise it above the ground and do any other transforms to it. By double-clicking the node, we can see its insides again and continue to edit. And then double-clicking toggles back to the outside. The legs of the piano are inherently different from the body since they come off the ground. Clicking on a cube in the left side library menu, we see that we have the original rectangle shape that forms that cube. We can adjust it using its handles. And once we have it to be the approximate size we need, we can think about how to pair it up with another leg and place it under the piano. So to do this, why don't we go ahead and take the output and add it to a pair repeater. A pair repeater just duplicates the object once and with symmetry if that's necessary. Then we can continue to uh, alter the object and rather than move the individual pieces, we'll move the pair repeater under the piano. Once it's roughly centered, we can continue to adjust the separation of the pair. And pair repeaters are actually a very common thing in architecture. You find symmetrical pairs all over the place once you start looking. So we can continue to edit the leg to make it look a little bit more like something that we'd see under a grand piano. Uh, and one thing that we might notice is that uh, often grand pianos have kind of tapered legs. So let's go ahead and taper that leg out a little bit using the uh, top handle of the extrude. And we'll bring it down in terms of its height. So it's about the height of the piano body. For the third leg, let's take one of these legs and we'll duplicate it. So with the menu in the node palette, I hit duplicate. And we've got our third leg, which we can just move over and approximately put into place. And now we've got the basic piano all together. We could keep on adding detail. Um, and But for now, let's just take these two nodes that we have, rename them, and combine them into yet a larger group. So this group becomes the entire piano. And we can use this group in other assemblies in our project. 
For example, if we link the output of this node to a radial repeater, then we've got all the instruments we need for a really great concert. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.